Hey, what's up guys out there in fan world? Thanks again for coming by to visit my website and if you're on my Facebook page. Hey, I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. Catch me over on Twitter at Rob Ham Photo. Today I want to tell you about a new camera. This is my preview of the Olympus OMD EM10. I have a new love in my life. Stick around, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. So we're back. Hey, just to let you know, my full review will be posted in the next week. This is what I consider my preview, just a couple days with the camera to let you know how I like it and what I like about it. Let's first talk about the big, big, big question that many of you may have. This is a Micro Four Thirds camera, right? So why would you want to shoot with a Micro Four Thirds camera? I'm going to have terrible image quality. Uh, they're terrible and horrible at low lights. Um, you know, they don't look professional. All of these, all of the terrible build qualities, really, really low build quality. Um, for me, <laughs> I was looking for a second camera that I could actually enjoy using as a photographer. I shoot with my Sony Alpha 77. This is a pretty big unit, even with the camera lens off. We've got some nice glass on there and everything. We're going to talk about that. So when I was looking for a camera, I wanted something that uh, would produce really great image quality, but also give me... Um, just the ease of use. Uh, I didn't particularly want point and shoot, but I wanted excellent point and shoot features in case I got tired of fiddling with all the knobs. Oh, and by the way, I wanted a camera that wasn't so entry level as to have just one command dial. I mean, come on. Then don't we have two things at least in, in in manual mode that we need to adjust more than anything else? Shutter and aperture? Come on, give me two dials. Because of that, I was actually considering a couple of different cameras. Number one, the A7. Now I'm not saying that this OMD is going to outshoot the A7, but it might. Uh, each camera has a different role and each camera has a different tool or job that it can bring to the party in order to make it work. But I was considering an A7. Uh, and so when I made this purchase it wasn't based on price. A7 is two and a half times more expensive than this camera is or two and a quarter times or something like that. And so it wasn't about the dollar bills. I was also considering the Fuji X-T1. Mm, it's another nice camera. So how does the OMD fit into this? Well, it was a camera that spoke to me by its design, first of all. Um, and now that means that because I decided to consider it, and I'm not even talking the OMD EM1, the, the top of the line, right? It's top of the line. It has to be better than all the other OMDs, right? We're going to get to that. This OMD-10, the smallest in the line, is what caught my eye. The price point is right around $800. Uh, I think it paid $750 for it at Best Buy. They actually had one in stock. Who knew Best Buy could actually keep something in stock other than Canon or Nikon? Jeez, peas. So they actually had one, but it was not on display. I saw it in the cage, and I asked to see it. I didn't expect to be impressed at all, especially when comparing it to something like, oh, the Alpha A7, the Sony A7. But then something happened. The guy took it out of the box and handed it to me, um, and I was blown away. First things first, the body is an all-steel construction. This thing weighs a lot. It's metal, right? Uh, I happen to have the silver and black. This is rubberized something. Could possibly be plastic. I don't know. Um, nice large display, touch screen, right? Beautiful command dials to use right here, plus a detent button with halfway press. It's pretty standard for most, but hey, for some Micro Four Thirds and some entry levels, not at all. Remember, this is their entry level. Two command dials. They have nice click to them. Looks good. They're not. There's no plastic on this that I can feel. I mean, okay, sure, this is plastic, all right. Uh, but other than that, it's metal and glass. Like these are anodized aluminum. That we're, that we're hitting right here. This is steel of some sort, I, I don't even know. But let's just continue. Look at this, a function button customizable there. Another function button customizable there. The third function button, which is a movie button, is also customizable. In fact, every button on the back, except the, for the right and up button, is also customizable. Well, maybe not the menu button. Uh, so, so look at this, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six, fully programmable, customizable buttons. And this one right here allows you to scroll through using your command wheel. So if you want to do something, you can just change all different types of multiple functions. So it was a beauty to pick up and touch. That's the first part. It feels like quality. It doesn't feel like anything cheap um, by any means. Olympus didn't didn't spare any uh, 
spare any dollars here. And they want this to feel like a premium camera. Their whole philosophy is for this to be a premium experience. The next part is, um, this is the EM10. It's the smallest, it's the least expensive. Well, about three years ago, Canon came out with an EM5. Uh, not this camera, the upgraded version of this camera, but it's the oldest. Then they came out with the EM1, the OMD EM1, the pro version, right? And then recently they have come out with this, which is the EM10. So the question is, what does this have that the others don't? I mean, why would I buy it? You gotta be losing something. Well, actually you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. First of all, this shares the same processor as the OMD EM1, the top of the line flagship. It's their Type 7 processor, I believe it's TruePic or TrueView processor, um, uh, image, pro excuse me, sensor that they use, Micro Four Thirds, of course. Uh, the OMD EM5 uses the version six. So, here's a nice little element taken straight from the big brother of all of them. Secondly, he uses in-body image stabilization. He uses three-axis in-body image st stabilization, so it uses yaw, pitch, and roll, right? Which is nice. The other two cameras both have five-axis uh, in-body image stabilization, okay? So what do the other two have that this one doesn't? The next big thing is weather sealing, and that may not be an issue for most people. For me, it's not particularly an issue for this camera, um, uh, but if you want weather sealing, you, you need to buy uh, the OMD EM5 or EM10. This also has Wi-Fi connectivity and sharing straight through your smartphone. So yeah, open up your Olympus app on your iPhone or Android, and next thing you know, you've got full remote tether capabilities in real time. Uh, guys, that is a serious feature. Think about when you want to take shots of your family. Um, the other thing that uh, uh, you don't get with this one is it is contrast-based uh, autofocus only. Uh, there's no dual autofocus on this one. The EM1, uh, the OMD EM1 has both. Um, and I'm not sure if the EM5 does. So basically, here, here's the deal. Oh, and a portrait grip. Notice how this has a little stubby grip. The EM5 doesn't has a very similar grip, but the OMD EM10 is a much larger camera, bigger in your hands. It's it's uh, built to be a very professional use with um, GPS and geotagging through your smartphone, of which this one will do as well. Wi-Fi tethering through your smartphone, uh, the weather sealing, the five-axis image stabilization, um, and the uh, dual autofocus contrast and phase detect. Also, oh, I guess the, the one last thing, and this really isn't a big deal to me at all, uh, movies, like, so this is uh, 1080p at 30 frames per second, right, it's a 24-bit frame rate, which is nice, um, but it's only 30 frames a second, so there you go. Uh, however, the OMD EM1 has the, has the uh, 60 frames a second, which is, which is nice. So, let's get back to this. The point that I, I went through that long four minutes to try to explain is that they didn't skimp on this camera and they brought the price down. They didn't say, oh man, entry level. Well, you not just can't have weather sealing. You can't have the all metal. They could have chosen plastic. They didn't say, ah, you can't have image stabilization. They said, we'll give you y'all pitch and roll. Um, uh, you can't have phase detect autofocus, so you get contrast detect. Yeah, that's true, but they did make it a pretty good snappy contrast detect autofocus. Um, so there's a lot of things along that that you'd end up liking and enjoying quite a bit. This camera for me um, means that I can take pictures of my family in a way that is fun, that I don't have to lug around something this big. So those are some of the considerations that I had and some of the things I was thinking about when I chose to purchase this camera. Uh, and we're going to end that preview real quick with that, uh, just that I'm, I'm extremely pleased with it and the picture quality is absolutely excellent and we're gonna actually go to, through some of that in the next review. So just stay tuned uh, for part two, it'll be coming up soon.